all night long. <laughs> Okay, scenes from the uh, House of Commons last night. That was a video of Quebec uh, Liberal MP Rémi Massé dancing to All Night Long in the House uh, last night, a video he later, later deleted from his Twitter feed. The marathon voting began after Liberals defeated a Conservative motion that would have required National Security Advisor Daniel Jean to appear before a public committee. So the Conservatives used a political tool to force more than 250 budgetary votes that could have been folded into one. Those votes are significant because they are confidence votes. And if the government hadn't made sure there were enough bodies on their side to pass them, it could have sparked an election. But after roughly 21 hours, as we mentioned, of voting, the Conservatives felt they had made their point. Conservatives made a, res a reasonable request of Justin Trudeau that we have a one-hour committee meeting to ask questions of Daniel Jean. And we did so with the hope that the Prime Minister would be true to his promise of transparency. It has become clear that Justin Trudeau is hiding something. This is a cover-up. And as Candace Bergen was speaking, the Prime Minister was also speaking on Facebook Live. Here is what he had to say. These are uh, a procedural process that we're going through because uh, the Conservatives want us to, and it's fine. We uh, know about uh, you know, the importance of the House and going through uh, everything in, in, in its right way. But at the same time, we're not voting on uh, or debating uh, the common sense gun laws that we brought in. We're not moving forward other agenda items. Uh, and importantly, we're also not uh, filling uh, obligations for our constituents and out across the country. And joining me now from the foyer of the House of Commons, Ontario Liberal MP Marco Mendicino, Ontario Conservative MP Aaron O'Toole, and Matt Dubay, NDP caucus chair. I'm sure you guys have had a, a lot of coffee. You're very tired, so I appreciate uh, having you on to break this through for us. A after those 21 hours of voting, <laughs> can, you, can you tell us, after 21 hours of voting, Marco, let me start with you, are Canadians any better off for it? No, and they should uh, be uh, looking at the Conservatives for, for an accounting of that, and that's because what we ought to have been doing is debating Bill C-71, which would have made our communities safer by reducing gun violence. I'm a Toronto Member of Parliament. Um, in the last week or so, we've had uh, two innocent lives taken from us uh, at a bowling alley where I take my, my two girls. Uh, we should be debating laws to make our community safer. We didn't do that. Instead, what we did was... Um, have to deal with another Hail Mary attempt from Aaron O'Toole, who's tried on three, two separate other, other occasions to politicize national security. If he wants to ask serious questions about national security, the, the place to do that is NSICOP, the new Committee of Parliamentarians, which has the mandate, it has the personnel, it has the top secret um, infrastructure to have important discussions around national security. Um, in addition to that, um, the Conservatives were offered a briefing by the, the, the Privy Council. They simply did not either take it up um, or, or chose not to have the conversation, which I think actually true. shows the motivation okay. here. Let, it's to stall let, the agenda bring, of the people. Okay, I, I, got, I have to bring in Mr. O'Toole on a couple of those points. So let, let's, let's talk about that first, this issue of the Privy Council offering a briefing, apparently, to Conservative leader Andrew Scheer. The Privy Council has confirmed that it has. The leader has said that... He never received any such offer. So is the Privy Council lying? Uh, it's unfortunately they've now brought the Privy Council and some very distinguished civil servants into this mess, Omar. Uh, there was no offer to Andrew Scheer, myself, any of the other Privy Councillors. In fact, the first time we heard of this new ruse was while we were voting in the House. Um, that, that was very unfortunate because had they done that a week ago, we might not have been there. Here's what we were asking for. We were asking for the same briefing that the Prime Minister's office allowed Mr. Jean to give to journalists. There's no confidentiality concerns because it was to journalists, and they were able to ask a few questions. We started out asking for two hours. We went to one hour, half an hour. We just have the right to ask the same questions. They're in the driver's seat. They have a majority. They've used it to crush this issue at Public Safety Committee, to stop it and block it in Parliament. So we're using the tools to shine the light on what is a cover-up. 
the Atwal Indian Affair cover-up. And Canadians deserve an answer to what is the largest diplomatic scandal in Canadian history. And the short answer to your question, Omar, is yes, the Conservatives apparently do think that the Privy Council office is lying because he's saying that, they, they, that, that one was, an offer was not made and you yourself have said that the Privy Council office confirmed that one was made. So uh, I think that the implication okay. of that statement is uh, now, they're, now they're alleging the Privy Council isn't, isn't reliable. We have to bring in Matthew Dubé into this. Our government. Okay, I got to bring in Matthew Dubé into this conversation. You know, you heard there what your colleagues have been saying. Uh, Matt Dubé, Mr. Mendicino is saying that there is a forum for this inside a super secret committee. Uh, Mr. O'Toole is saying it shouldn't be inside a super secret committee because Mr. Jean, uh, the Conservatives say, shared this information uh, with journalists. And so there is no issue of, of, of classified information. Where do you stand on it? Well, I don't know if when we talk about the capacity that that committee has to deal with these issues and the personnel, I'm the vice chair of the Public Safety Committee. I think we deal with these issues on a regular basis. And I understand that the National Committee of Parliamentarians is something that's long overdue. It's there to review uh, in incidents related to the behavior of our national security agencies and law enforcement like the RCMP so that we don't have situations like another Mahara or things like that. That being said, it is not a place where the minister and the government should be punting contracts controversial issues. I think that it's absolutely within the, the committee's mandate to hear from the National Security Advisor. It's not uh, without precedent. And certainly I think there is a legitimate uh, issue to be raised over the type of questioning the person would go through and their ability to answer all those questions openly. And I think we as committee members on that committee are, are perfectly suited to be able to uh, ask the appropriate questions and to move in camera, which is something that both the NDP and the Conservatives, if I may, said to the Liberals was on the mm -hmm. table and so far as the negotiations were going. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're talking about making statements in public. The statements were made to the media. It doesn't get much more public than that. And I think it's absolutely appropriate and would help put this thing to rest and move on to other things. Hopefully. So, Mr. Mendicino, what's, what's the issue? I mean, if, if, if the National Security well, Advisor spoke with journalists on the trip, why are, are, is your party blocking attempts to have him appear before the Public Safety Committee? Why not just let him appear for, you know, a, a half an hour, as Mr. O'Toole is saying? What's the issue? Well, first, let me just say I, I served on the uh, Standing Committee for Public Safety with Mathieu, and I know that he works very hard, but it's not enough just to be in camera. It's whether or not the individuals are top secret cleared, and that is precisely why we created a separate committee of parliamentarians made up of members of parliament and senators from every party, including three Conservatives, who also have the opportunity to put questions to any member within the national security apparatus. And it is by virtue of having that additional um, clearance that we are confident that we can have thoughtful discussions, serious discussions, not just recklessly out in the open, to ensure that we are striking the balance between keep, keeping Canadians safe, keeping the, the, the important techniques that our, our, our national security apparatus used to keep us safe, as well as the privacy of Canadians. We can't always accomplish that at the Public Safety Committee, because even though you move in camera, the individuals there are not top secret cleared, and Mr. Dubé knows that. Mr. Mr. O'Toole, I've just got a couple of minutes left, and I want to get a uh, reaction from Mr. Dubé as well. So, you know, p people out there have been saying that this was a political stunt that the Conservatives used. You know, I was in the chamber yesterday. We saw a cabinet minister sneaking uh, salad under his desk. People were laughing. Uh, you know, the atmosphere was quite jo jovial. But, but to people who say that it's making a mockery of the democratic system, this decision to, you know, force 21 hours of votes, what's your response to that? My response is we could have avoided all that with a half hour of accountability that would have cost nothing on Mr. Dubé's committee. What was ironic, Omar, is in that chamber voting for hours was Mr. Sarai, a Liberal MP, who has admitted to inviting Jaspal Atwal. Jaspal Atwal has said he asked Mr. Sarai to invite him. Minister Freeland, when apologizing to the Indian government, said it was an honest mistake and that was made by a Liberal MP in her caucus. It's the Prime Minister who's brought up this preposterous conspiracy theory, and he relies on Mr. Jean. They brought it up to do damage control in the middle of a disastrous trip when they let Mr. Jean speak to the media. The Prime Minister brought this issue up. All we're asking for is a half hour to have the same briefing some journalists had. I think Canadians think that's reasonable. So we can find out, was it Mr. Sarai? Or is there some credence to Mr. Trudeau's crazy story? I think Canadians deserve that. 
our Indian partners and friends deserve that. And Aaron knows that the place where we ought to have national security discussions is NSI. There's, there's no journalists He's, there, and I'll Marco. Well, there, let's okay, guys, so give me the I've got 30 seconds left. There's I have to, have to get Mr. Well. Dubé into this but, for the sake but of fairness, Mr. Dubé. Let me just Mr. say one last Mr. thing. Dubé. The additional, but the well, additional cost is, I have to cut you off, Marco. Mr. Dubé, the question is to you. Do you think this issue will go away? I don't think so, and if it, any, the only people to blame are the Liberals. In committee, they've done exactly what's being done when I'm being spoken over, and when I'm trying to give you an answer is they've adjourned debate. They didn't yeah. even discuss the motion, they adjourned debate, they didn't even reject it, so we can't even hear the reasons. And it's not just about top secret clearance, it's about the Parliament, Committee of Parliamentarians for National Security not being a partisan football and allowing us at the Public Safety Committee to do our jobs and bring witnesses as has happened before in the past. So anyways, let's right, bring in some sunshine. Certainly an animated uh, well, discussion. Thanks. I have appreciate your time and uh, have a good weekend. Get some sleep.